As, as you heard in the introduction, I'm going to talk to you about our research looking at how some innovative hospitals in India are able to deliver high quality care consistently at relatively low cost. When I say relatively low, I'm talking about costs that are up one to 5% typically of costs in the United States. Now you might ask yourself, why India? Apart from the fact that I am from, originally from India, uh, and I look at innovation in emerging markets, and, and some of my work in the last few years has been in India, India is actually an interesting place to look for innovations in healthcare delivery. When you're talking about innovations in medicine, when you're talking about innovations in medical devices, when you're talking about innovations in new developing new drugs, we look to the US. The whole world looks to the US. But when it comes to innovations in delivery of healthcare, when the challenge is how do you use the existing medical knowledge to make it available to the greatest number of people possible at an affordable cost, poor countries like India are actually more promising laboratories for innovation. Just think about it for a minute. You've got 1.2 billion people who need healthcare. And like the advanced countries, people in India are also now dealing with lifestyle diseases. The uh, transmittable diseases, infectious diseases, are relatively under control. A huge need for treatment for cancer, for heart disease, and so on. And yet there's a tremendous shortage of doctors and hospitals and medical equipment. So if you're a doctor with any compassion at all, and you're seeing these patients lining up for care who can't afford to pay very much, remember the country's per capita income is $1,500, you will be driven to innovate to find ways to extend the, your service to as many people as possible. In addition, something that may surprise you is that 70% of healthcare costs in India are borne by patients out of pocket on average. And with a country with per capita income of $1,500, you even have poor people sometimes paying out of pocket because the government hospitals are just not able to provide them the care that they need. In that environment, is actually ripe for innovation. And what we did was we looked at 16 hospitals across a range of uh, uh, medical conditions that were particularly good at providing high quality care at low prices. We wrote it up as an article we published in the Harvard Business Review a few months back, and I'm going to share with you some of the main findings of that, uh, of that research. We identified three levers that these hospitals seem to use. Not, none of it is rocket science. If I asked you why is Southwest Airlines cheap, you can't give a single answer. They do a lot of things, but they all converge to make Southwest Airlines a safe airline that provides relatively low price service. That's all these hospitals are doing. And in fact, I found it very interesting during my research, how many times these doctors would mention companies like Southwest Airlines and Walmart and McDonald's as inspirations for their, what they were doing in their own hospitals. I, th I, I didn't expect to hear uh, them taking inspiration from these, these kinds of companies. In addition to these three factors, I think the, the fact they serve both rich and poor patients turns out to be, have a powerful side effect because the rich patients expect quality they actually can go to another hospital and pay much higher prices if they had to. So in order to serve the rich, these hospitals have to maintain certain levels of quality. At the same time, because their aim is to reach as many of the poor patients as possible, they also have to aspire for very low cost. That is how they seem to achieve this combination of high quality and low cost.